Hi everyone and thank you for joining me in another installment of my Q&A with Wall Street series. In this video I'm going to go into Microsoft most recent quarterly conference call with Wall Street analysts so let's get right into it. The first question coming from Morgan Stanley's Keith Weiss asking management to delve into the expansion of the investment into OpenAI the creator of chat GPT, of course, that's taking the internet by storm in recent months. And so the CEO, Satya Nutella, chiming in, saying that uh, I think we're also excited by, about OpenAI's own innovation. They commercialized their products, right? We saw that they launched a free version, but they also launched a version that I think was they were charging $44 per month for professional users. And so we're excited about the chat GPT being built on Azure and having the traction that it has, right? It's really popular. So we look to both. There's an investment part to it and there's a commercial partnership. But fundamentally, it's going to be something that's going to drive innovation and competitive differentiation in every one of Microsoft's solutions by leading in artificial intelligence. So this is exciting for Microsoft. It, it's not only invested in OpenAI as a owner partner, but it also has a commercial relationship with ChatGPT, where ChatGPT is using Microsoft Azure cloud services, right? So there's two sides to that that Microsoft is benefiting from. So that's going to be a strong tailwind for Microsoft investors. And oh, by the way, they're also going to infuse all of Microsoft products with this artificial intelligence capability that OpenAI provides. So each and every one of Microsoft products and services, you can expect to start to get these developments, these upgrades with artificial intelligence that's going to make it more user friendly and ultimately drive greater sales and greater profitability for the company longer term. The next question comes from Brent Thill from Jefferies asking Microsoft for their overall macroeconomic view. So Microsoft is a massive international corporation and they can provide a lot of insights with what they're seeing inside of their business as to what's going on in the overall economy in the world. So Sat Satya Nadella, Microsoft CEO, jumps in and says, I always sort of subscribe to that there's only one law of gravity that I think we're all subject to, which is inflation-adjusted economic growth in the world. That's the overarching theme that he looks at. I fundamentally believe that tech as a percentage of GDP is going to be much higher on a secular basis. So wherever overall GDP goes, he believes that tech spending as a percentage of that GDP is going to increase. In other words, you and me every day, if we were going to spend $1,000 overall this month, next month that percentage of spending is going to go towards uh, tech more than it was in the previous month. So every month, every 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 year, every week, we're going to be spending more and more of our money on technology. And that's the trend that Microsoft is seeing longer term. And so speaking to their customers specifically, he says they are making sure that they're getting the most value uh, out of it or for optimizing it. So whatever money their customers are spending with Microsoft, they're spending more time making sure they're, get, they're getting more bang for their buck. So rather than looking for new services to buy, existing customers are trying to use existing services as much as possible, trying to get a greater return on the existing investment rather than trying to make new investments. And also, then also being a bit more cautious on the given macroeconomic headwinds out there in the market. So given those two things, the point is at the same point. Uh, the optimizations will end. In fact, the money that they save in any optimization of any workload is what they'll plow into workloads. And those workloads will start ramping up. Okay, a little bit hard to infer that, but let's uh, let me give it an attempt here. So what 
what I think management is trying to say here is that there's only so much optimizing you can do. There's only so far you can go with existing services and there's only so much you can constrain spending on technology and services. Eventually, enterprises need to make investments in their technology in order to serve their customers. Otherwise, they're going to be left behind. Their customers are going to look elsewhere. So businesses are not going to risk losing their ex existing customers because they're trying to save on their tech investments. So this is a short-term thing that management expects uh, uh, a short-term pullback. Longer term, they expect tech spending to continue to grow a strong secular tailwind. And so finishing with, we can tell you what we see. What we see is optimization and some cautious approach to new workloads, and that will cycle through. But we do fundamentally believe on a long-term basis, as a percentage of GDP, tech spending is going to go up. In other words, yes, we do see near-term headwinds right now. Our customers are tightening their belts. They're not going out looking to make more tech investments, uh, more IT investments, more capital investments. But longer term, we do see growth in the industry. This is just an upward secular tailwind that's going to continue. And there's only so much uh, uh, caution that you can so so much so long that you can delay these investments right you're going to need to make these investments as an enterprise sure you can delay it for a few months maybe even a few quarters but you can't delay it forever you're going to need to make these investments you're going to need to keep up you're going to need to have the latest technology otherwise you're going to be left behind you're going to lose your customers so that's the macro uh picture that Microsoft CEO Satya Nadella gave to uh, analysts and Wall Street investors in this session. All right, so that's all I've got for this video. I hope I provided some insights into what's going on here, and I hope you'll join me next time for another installment of my Q&A with Wall Street series. Thanks for watching. I want to thank The Motley Fool for sponsoring this video. Visit fool.com slash parkev for the 10 best stocks to buy now.